Okay, so apparently I guess the last one kind of uh, buggered up a bit. So we're back on this. I got to do another one uh, just to do this part. So these are the people I contacted again. Uh, right Honorable Justin Trudeau. Uh, political affiliation liberal. Constituency Papineau. Province, Territory, Quebec. Of course, this is the Prime Minister of the of Canada. I, I think of the Queen. But uh, email is justin.trudeau at parl.gc.ca. Preferred language is French or English. His Hill office is House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1A0A6, telephone 613-995-0253, or fax 613-947-0310. Mail may be sent postage free to any member of Parliament. Uh, his constituency office is at 529 Jari Street East, J-A-R-R-Y. That's his main office. It's at Suite 302. Montreal, Quebec, H2P1V4, telephone 514-277-6020, fax 514-277-3454. That's Mr. Trudeau, and still no word. Next minister. The Honorable Ralph Goodall. Goodall. Uh, political he's Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness, and he's one of the triumvirates. Political affiliation, Liberal. Constituency, Regina, Wiscana. Province or Territory of Saskatchewan. Email, ralph.goodall, G-O-O-D-A-L-E at parl.gc.ca, website ralphgoodale.ca. Uh, Preferred language, English. Hill Office, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1A0A6. His telephone is 613-947-1153, fax 613-996-9790. Mail may be sent postage free to any member of Parliament. Constituency office is 310 University Park Drive, main office, Regina, Saskatchewan, S4B0Y8, telephone 306-585-2202, fax 306-585-2280. Again for federal. We have the Honorable Jody Wilson-Raybould. And what a nice smile, eh? Uh, political affiliation is uh, liberal. Constituency, Vancouver Granville. Great place to live. Province or territory, British Columbia. Email jody.wilson-raybould at parl.gc.ca. Website, www.vancouvergranville.ca. Preferred language, English or French. Uh, Hill office is House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1A0A6. Telephone 613-992-1416. Fax 613-992-1460. Again, mail may be sent postage free to any member of Parliament. Her constituency office is 1245 West Broadway. Suite 104 is the main office in Vancouver, British Columbia. V6H1G7. Telephone 604-717-1140 or fax 604-717-1144. And she, of course, is the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. That's the one who I just sent the emails to on May 31st. <clears throat> Again, this is to, to show you exactly who was notified for the federal uh, or, excuse me, from federal and provincial on March 26th of this year. So we have the Honorable Jane Philpot. That's the Minister of Health. She's got a nice smile too. Look at that. Everybody's got a nice smile up there. I guess it, maybe they got a secret or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, political affiliation is liberal. Constituency Markham Stofel and province or territory is Ontario. Email jane.philpot, P-H-I-L-P-O-T-T, -T, at parl.gc.ca. Website is jphilpot.liberal.ca. Preferred language is English. 
Uh, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1A0A6, telephone 613-992-3640 or fax 613-992-3642. Mail may be sent postage free to any member of Parliament. Her constituency office, main office, is at 6060 Main Street, Stouffville, Ontario. And Stouffville is S-T-O-U-F-F-B-I-L-L-E. L4A1B8, telephone 905-640-1125, and fax 905-640-1184. That's for the Minister of Health. Again, somebody else who I thought might be concerned by some of the issues raised, and or I should say, not raised, exposed. And this fine gentleman, who's trying very hard not to smile, it looks like, is the Honorable Jean-Yves Duclos, Minister of Families, Children, and Social Development. He is one of the uh, uh, triumvirates as well, which is uh, Ralph Goodall, Jean-Yves Duclos, and Carla Qualtro are the triumvirates of uh, looking over human rights in Canada, I guess. Uh, anyway. Political affiliation is Liberal, Constituency, Quebec, Province, Territory, Quebec. Wow, he has all of Quebec? He's pretty good. Oh, Quebec City, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's Quebec City. Anyway, uh, email jean-eve, Y-V-E-S, dot duclos, at parl.gc.ca. Website, jduclos.liberal.ca. Preferred language, first is French, of course. And then English, of course. And and it's really amazing because every single one of the representatives from Quebec take the time to know French and English as they're required to. I notice that there's a lot of people, especially from Ontario, that still are not having French as us uh, knowing French. I hope you're taking lessons because it is the two official languages of Canada. And uh, it's a matter of character. If Monsieur Duclos and other people can take the time to learn English, I think it's only fair that we should learn French and be able to speak it because it's part of accessibility as well, eh? Anyway, uh, and it's not supposed to be discriminated on based on language either. So uh, Hill Office, of course, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1A0A6, telephone 613-992-8865. Fact 613-995-2805. Mail may be sent postage free to any member of Parliament. <coughs> His constituency office is 275 Charay Boulevard East. Wow, Jean was uh, Premier how long? He's got a street named after him? Or maybe that was there first. Maybe he's named after the street. You never know. Anyway, Jean Charay. No, anyway, uh, 275 Charay Boulevard East, Quebec, Quebec. G1K3G8. Telephone 418-523-6666 and fax 418-523-6672. Again, Minister of Families, Children, Social Development. Looks like a fine gentleman. Let's just see if he can rise to the occasion. Okay, Federal, the Honorable Marianne Mishik. And again, Marianne, uh, Ms. Ms. Mishik, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, political affiliation is liberal. Kildonan St. Paul is her constituency, and it's in Manitoba. She's the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development, and Labor. Email is maryann.mishik at parl.gc.ca. That's M-A-R-Y-A-N-N dot M-I-H-Y-C-H-U-K at parl.gc.ca. Website is mmishuk at uh, dot liberal dot ca. Preferred language is English. Hill Office, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1A0A6. Telephone 613-992-7148 or fax 613-996-9125. Mail may be sent postage free to any member of Parliament. Her constituency office is located at 1575 Main Street, Winnipeg, Manitoba, and that's her main office, R2W3W5. Telephone 204-984-6322 or fax 204-984-6415. 
And by the way, that's not a squeaking tire in the background. That is Tiger, our dog. Actually, it's my roommate's dog, but he, he, he likes me too. Anyway, uh, yeah, I thought so too, Tiger. Can you please let me finish this? Oh, he needs to go out. I think, I think he needs to go out. So this is the uh, Honorable Carla Qualtro, uh, Minister of Sports and Persons with Disabilities. Note under Jean Yves Duclos, Minister of Families, Children, Social Development, and also liaising with uh, the other triumvirate, which is Mr. Goodall. Uh, political affiliation is liberal. Constituency is Delta and British Columbia. Uh, she's sight impaired as well, which is uh, really, well, it's not really good. <laughs> I, I'm just, it's really good that she's uh, stepping up for people with disabilities, and I really wish she would uh, make comment on this or deal with this. Uh, her staff has actually been the only one that's actually provided me an answer as to, uh, you know, whether or not they received it and uh, whether or not it was forwarded. Uh, other than that, I haven't been able to receive much more information, but every other department is like, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, uh, or not sure what you're talking about. Uh, now, dealing with uh, Ms. Raybould's office as well, she's, I'm, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. I, I, after what Carla Qualtro's, uh, assistant told me about it was uh, received on the 26th of March just as it was sent and Carla Qualtro sent it or whoever her staff sent it up to the appropriate persons on the 27th and there have been meetings about it is what I was told and I can't remember if it was Ms. Raybould's office or Carla Qualtro's office but they've said that at some point someone would be getting in touch with me and so far I haven't seen it and nobody's made any attempt to get a hold of my caregiver either through any of this to try and discuss anything with my caregiver but uh, that's another matter anyway uh, Carla Qualtro that's C-A-R-L-A dot Q-U-A-L-T-R-O-U-G-H at parl dot G-C dot C-A preferred English is their preferred language is English and French uh, Hill Office, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1A0A6, telephone 613-992-2957, or fax 613-992-3192. Mail may be sent postage free to any member of Parliament, constituency office. Her main office is located at 7511 120th Street, Suite 104 in Delta, British Columbia, V4C. 0C1. Telephone 778-593-4007. Fax 778-593-4008. Okay, so that's Miss Qualtro. And then of course the infamous Rad Saney. Now Raj, I know you're new to the to the game and all that. Well, maybe not to the game. You've been a doctor for a long time. Uh, and that's a game in and of itself, no matter which part of the game you play on, if you're for the patient or, or one of those people, the small percentage who likes to take advantage of everything. Anyway, Raj Saini, this is the, uh, my representative for Kitchener Center. He's a liberal, province of Ontario. Email raj.saini at parl.gc.ca. Preferred language is English and French. Yeah, that's really good. You can speak French, Raj. That's, that's great. One of the few people in Ontario who probably can't, who's uh, representing people in this region. And there's a lot of French people in Kitchener, which is a uh, little known fact, probably. Anyway, uh, Hill Office is House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, K1A0A6, telephone 613-995-8913, fax 613-996-7329. Again, mail may be sent postage free to any member of Parliament. Doesn't mean that they're going to answer you, though. Same with emails, apparently. Uh, Raj, I've been talking to the most. Anyway, uh, or trying to. <laughs> Constituency office is located at beautiful downtown Kitchener. Main office at 209 Frederick Street, King uh, at, at uh, Lancaster, Suite 202, Kitchener, Ontario. Norman 2 Henry 2 Michael 7. Telephone 519-741-2001. Fax is 519-579-2404. And for anybody who's paying attention, 
He has exactly the same staff as John Malloy. So if you ever dealt with John Malloy's office, um, there you are. Gee, I just realized something. I forgot somebody for the provincials. And I'm going to have to tr give her fair warning, I guess. And that would be Diane Verniel. Diane Verniel uh, is the representative for Kitchener on the provincial level. And uh, she used to work for CTV and CKCO TV. She had a very long, uh, illustrious career. Very well respected. Uh, very good with her reports and that. Uh, anyway, hopefully she can use some of those skills to get to the bottom of what's going on for her constituent for all of our constituents. Hey, eh? uh, again, that's the only one who I just realized I forgot to notify, but I've notified everybody else, so I'm sure that she knows about it too. Uh, I will try and drop by the office or or forward some emails to her, just to be fair. So provincially, Honorable Kathleen Owen, Owen. What's going on? <laughs> MPP for Don Valley West. Also happens to be Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. She was Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing for from October 20th, 2011 to November 5th, 2012. And that's from her parliamentary career details page. Currently, she is the uh, Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, the Premier and leader of the Liberal Party of Ontario. So it's very important to know that uh, Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, that's the person who makes sure that she controls how everybody else communicates because this is a dynasty that she needs to maintain of liberal corruption in Ontario. It's a matter of being above the law. This is definitely one of those people who feel that she's privileged. Uh, she was privileged to uh, stop the Air Orange uh, fiasco, uh, which they were getting caught up in. And she did that on behalf of us because, again, what they're doing to protect us, or sorry, what we don't know about what they're doing to protect us won't hurt them. So, one of my favorite people on the planet. Could you tell? Hey, Kathleen, remember you had that, uh, you know, we should all have been known better because she had that advertising where she likes to run. You've been running away from this for 12 years, Kathleen. Well, since 2011, anyway, when you were Minister of Housing and your ministry created that deliberate fraud on us. Plus, uh, you got some, you, you need to answer some questions as to exactly what's going on at the uh, Landlord Trenet Tribunal because it's, you, you were famous for bringing in that law that it's mandatory that you must have a, a, a legal agreement between landlord tenant. But the landlord tenant bar does not require to see any of them because that would just complicate your deny, deflect, and obstruct, right? Anyway, uh, that's okay. I am looking forward to seeing you on the running for the welfare line. Anyway, uh, actually, I'd rather see you in prison, but we can't get everything we want, maybe, eh? Keep it up, and maybe I will get my wish. Anyway kwin.mpp at liberal.ola.org, room 281, Main Legislative Building, Queen's Park, Toronto, Ontario, M as in Michael, 7A1A1. Telephone 416-325-1941, fax 416-325-9895. And her constituency office is Suite 101 at 795 Eglinton Avenue, East Toronto, Ontario, Michael 4 Gregory 4 Echo 4 or M4G4E4, telephone 416-425-6777, fax 416-425-0350, and again, her email is kwynne, W-Y-N-N-E, why, I don't know, dot mpp dot co at liberal dot ola dot org. Okay, so... There goes Miss Wynn. I squish your head. I squish your head like you, you, you squish your head, squish your head. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Got carried away. Sorry about that. Ode to the kids in the hall. <clears throat> and, of course, my next favorite person in the world. This is the one who, if you look at all the... Uh, 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 Auditor General's reports, uh, this is the person who's responsible for all that nonsense that's been going on in healthcare for all those years. Uh, while they uh, deconstruct our patient-centered care system into the fractionalized private system, which again now, it's not the job of the government to make sure the patients are safe. 
Matter of fact, they don't track it, and they certainly don't do anything about it except for cover it up and bury it and cover the ass of the people who are doing it. You know, that isn't government wonderful. Anyway, Honorable Deb Matthews, MPP for London North Centre, another person I'd like to see behind bars. Current parliamentary roles are Minister Responsible for Poverty Reduction Strategy. You're not doing a good job. Deputy Premier, President of the Treasury Board. Party is Ontario Liberal Party. Now, as Minister Responsible for Poverty Reduction Strategy, do you think that allowing persons with disabilities or anybody who cannot write things down for themselves to be able to go to legal aid and be able to have that written down regardless of the merits or what they're claiming against government? Do you think that uh, poverty reduction strategy, that if landlords were actually illegal landlords are actually held responsible instead of being facilitated to uh, come to give money to the and, and produce money for the landlord tenant board illegally and improperly over the years by having repeat offenders come back and back and back again? We are looking forward to uh, your, your answers on this, Miss Deputy Premier, and especially the answers about how you explain your job as the health minister. Because it was under your tutelage that the healthcare system became a health insurance system which is not patient centered and is now completely fraudulent. But the biggest thing, and, and gee, if you and the Premier and the Health Minister and the colleges don't have anything to hide, then take the gags off your members. Allow the nurses college should uh, the nurses college and doctors college should allow any doctor, any nurse to be able to speak publicly about what their personal experience have been in this healthcare system with regard to possible interference by uh, non-medical personnel trying to direct treatment. The other thing you need to do is do an autom autom immediate autom uh, audit of every healthcare provider in Ontario to ensure that the RH, Regulated Health Practitioners Act, is being followed with regard to ownership of all facilities are to be by medical doctors with a medical license. And that there is no interference with the a course of medicine with patient-centered care with regard to any non-medical personnel directing treatment, board of governors or corporation or otherwise. That's the law. Anyway, uh, Deb Matthews, D. Matthews, sorry, D. Matthews, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-S dot M-P-P at liberal dot O-L-A dot org. Uh, room 4320, fourth floor, Whitney Block, 99 Wellesley Street e West, Toronto, Ontario, M7A1W3. Telephone 416-327-2333. Fax 416-327-3790. Constituency office is first floor, 242 Piccadilly Street, London, Ontario, N6A, N is Norman that is. 1S4, 519-432-7339 is her telephone, and the fax is 519-432-0613. I believe in order to speak with her, you need the check attached, apparently. Again, her, her email is dmatthews dot mpp dot co at liberal dot ola dot org. Another one of my favorite people was that Deb Matthews lady. And this is the uh, Honorable Madeleine Mayu, MPP, Ottawa Vanier, Minister Responsible for Francophone Affairs. That's good for Ontario. We need that. And Attorney General. You know, that's, that's actually hopeful. Uh, we have a Minister Responsible for Francophone Affairs in, in Ontario. That's showing uh, progress, I think. Anyway, M. Mayu. M M E I L L E U R dot M P P at liberal dot O L A dot org. She's a ministry of the Attorney General, eleventh floor, seven twenty Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario. M as in Michael five G two K one. Four one six three two six two 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 zero is the telephone. Four one six three two six four zero one six is the fax. Toll free one eight hundred five one eight seven nine zero one. Uh, talked with that office many a time to no avail because, again, this is the woman who's responsible for upholding the law while making sure that the Crown never gets held accountable for breaking the law or other anointed persons of privilege. Uh, 
Office of Francophone Affairs is second floor, 700 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, M7A0A2. Telephone 416-325-4949. Fax 416-325-4980. Toll free 1-800-628-7507. Constituency office is 237 Montreal Road, Vanier, Ontario, K1L6C7. Telephone number 613-744-4484. And the fax is 613-744-0889. Again, M M E M M. E I L L E U R dot M P P dot co at or C O, sorry, at liberal dot O L A dot org. Again, you need to get your work done, Ms. Mille. You need to restore confidence in the legal system, Ms. Mille. Working with your counterpart, Ms. Jody Wilson Rabel. Time to roll up the sleeves. Okay. Honorable Eric Hoskins, MPP for St. Paul's. And again, honorable is not bestowed. Honor is not bestowed, it's earned. So let's see if you guys can earn any. He's currently the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. He's also a doctor, uh, Party's Ontario Liberal Party. He's Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, 10th floor, Hepburn Block, 80 Grosvenor Street, which is G-R-O-S-V-E-N-O-R, Toronto, Ontario, M as in Michael, 7A, 2, C as in Charlie, 4. Telephone 416-327-4300, fax 416-326-1571. Email is ehoskins, H-O-S-K-I-N-S, dot M-P-P at liberal dot O-L-A dot org. Constituency office is 803 St. Clair Avenue West, Toronto, Ontario. M is in Michael, 6 C is in Charlie, 1 B is in Bertram, 9. Telephone 416-656-0943 or fax 416-656-0875. Again, ehoskins.mpp.co at liberal.ola.org. Mr. Hoskins, is this not a concern about patient safety? Your ministry has to answer the most because again, patient safety and, and please produce the if I'm if I'm a liar or mistaken, please produce the documents that prove it. Show us where patient harm is being tracked or or even cataloged in any way, shape, or form. Show us where the rule is not that they're only allowed to look in their own four walls when it comes to patient harm. And by all means, you need to answer the questions I asked you because you are a medical doctor, sir. And I directed these questions at you and they are very valid questions and I believe you risk your license and I will go after any license of any doctor who is not doing his job under the law. And if you're skirting your responsibilities and if you, it seems like you are because again, this was sent March 26th. Here we are June 12th, actually 13th now because it's the middle of the night probably. Oh, no, actually, no, it's still the 12th. It's only 10 to 11. Okay, and we have Provincial Honorable Kevin Daniel Flynn, MPP for Oakville. Looks like a good old Irish lad. Strong. He's got a good smile, too. Look at that. Lights up the whole face. Anyway, looks like he might be a nice individual. Uh, anyway, this is the Minister of Labor for the Ontario Liberal Party. Ministry of Labor is located at 14th floor, 400 University Avenue, Toronto, Ontario. M as in Michael, 7A1T7. Telephone 416-325-5200. Fax 416-325-5215. Again, contact email is kflynn, F-L-Y-N-N, dot M-P-P at liberal dot O-L-A dot org. His constituency office is located at, in Unit 2 at 2318 Lakeshore Road West in Oakville, Ontario, L6L1H3. Telephone 905-827-5141 and fax 905-827-3786. Again, kflynn.mpp.co at liberal.ola.org. Mr. Flynn. You, sir, have the most responsibility with looking at what happened here, sir. You are now in charge of that department. 
Kitchener Pallet Services on Arnold Street in Kitchener. Borden Cold Storage, Arnold Street in Kitchener. Liberty Staffing Services, I believe, was on King Street in Kitchener. Uh, Kim Wood LaRue, well, it's all a matter of record as to who is responsible at the Labor Board and also within your own ministry. And the biggest thing you need to clarify, sir, is make sure that this law is exercised the way it's supposed to be. Between you and the Attorney General and the Premier and those that are responsible, it is your responsibility. You cannot shirk it. And it's time that you stop avoiding the truth. Because you're not going to be allowed to now. This is crimes against humanity now. This is genocide. This is Canadian human rights violation, let alone any international human rights. And yet, March 26th, every one of these people that I just showed you were sent that email where we're asking for help. And it will be posted. Well, it's it's there. Go check it out for yourself. Uh, also, I didn't do the pages for, again, Diane Verniel is missing because, again, I have to honestly say I forgot all about you, Diane. Sorry about that. Um, and I actually have to apologize to some lady because when I was on the street corner about a week ago, uh, she came up and asked me if I knew where Diane Verniel was because she was a liberal uh, representative, and I forgot you're the provincial representative, I made the mistake of saying, no, I think the li liberal representative is Raj Saini, and I mistakenly sent her to Raj's office. Um, I believe you're on Queen somewhere. I'm going to have to look it up and find out, but uh, anyway, uh, look forward to trying to contact you, Diane. I'm not sure if it's going to get me anywhere, but again, out of fairness, I will, I will do that. Um, either way, like I said, where is the representation for any of us? These are relevant issues, and yet not one of these people have chosen to speak out at all or to even acknowledge it. Matter of fact, all they've done is turned up the volume at this uh, fiasco horse and pony show trial that they put me on in order to try and discredit me. This is very serious. Uh, there's two last ones i got to show you. This is the... Office of the Canadian Human Rights Commission. This is our uh, person that we have. I don't know how I can do this. Okay, I guess like that. Okay. So, Chief Commissioner is Marie Claude Landry, M A R I E hyphen C L A U D E Landry, L A N D R Y. And Chief Commissioner of the Canadian Human Rights Commission. So this, this is the person who's been avoiding me as well. And, and this is the one who, uh, ma'am, you need to answer the question, why is it that a disabled person can't even call up the Canadian Human Rights Commission, a person with a disability for no improper purpose other than to record, to participate in their own life, and they have to seek permission to even talk to you? Is that in line with UN protocol on disability rights? The other thing is that the, the commission, both Ontario Human Rights, which I've got here, Ontario Human Rights Commission as well, neither of these places will write down anything for a person with a disability. Ontario Human Rights Commission has the Ontario Human Rights Commission Legal Support Center now, but I've already gone through that and it's nothing more than window dressing and more frustrating in order to piss people off so that they'll go away or at least if they ever came there, they would never come back. Because it's such, an un, such a delightful experience. Anyway, I've got it on tape, and you guys got something to explain. But in this day and age, under UN Protocol on Disability Rights, you don't have the right to say that we don't record if it's for no improper purpose to participate in our life. That's why it's time that we take you to the international court. If you can't get it right, and this isn't changed right away, like I said, because of this policy for 13 years, People of privilege have been able to dismiss my right to be heard because of the content of what I'm trying to say. And this is fully, it can be, it can be, matter of fact, with just the public record. 
Just the public record alone is enough to show what's going on, so you don't even need any information from me. But the fact that I have this information as far as exactly what happened in real time, dealing with your different varying departments of, of window dressing in Canada, again, of which we pay very high taxes for and mightily for, and you guys like to tout Canada as this bastion of human rights. Matter of fact, we go around telling everybody else what they should do for human rights. Well, I'm here to call your bullshit. And I'm about to sign uh, to resign my citizenship because you're full of shit. It's not something I want to do. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm hoping you don't make me. But every Canadian needs to know that both of these organizations, as, as good as they tout themselves to be, they do not assist you to write it down because they see it as legal advice. It's not legal advice. You're asking for a procedural situation. Purely procedural. But hey, you know, whenever there's gray, it's it's like 500,000 shades of gray. It's not black and white. Uh, you know, the only thing that's black and white is exactly what happened over the last year at this courthouse with regard to providing access to, and, and again, do I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about? Of course I know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm the most dangerous man in Canada. All because... They got caught on tape. And here's what we need to ask ourselves, even with regard to, especially with regard to the public cameras at courthouse or anywhere else. If it is a public camera funded by public funds to protect the public, then nobody should have the right to say it's not admissible or it's not usable or at least not distributable. Because again, this is claiming to be uh, accessibility for persons with disabilities. Not only was I not able to write it down, but the, hot, the the lawyer that was hired for me on my behalf did not speak to me or make any kind of contact with regard to one-on-one. -on -one. You know, he did not respect me at all. He talked to my family. He talked to everybody but me. I did not see the lawyer that was appointed me, Stephen Gale, until the day I was released, which was six or seven days later. Under a 72-hour hold, you are required to have legal uh, representation at once, immediately. It says immediately, which was also interfered with. So every step of the way here, they have acted with impunity and continue to act with impunity because something this serious not to even have a comment on or even acknowledge the person who sent the information or try to contact my caregiver at any point in time to either corroborate information or to see if there's a better way to communicate again i invite anybody and everybody you need to go and check out my un guidebook to parliamentarians office of public service workers uh there's there's papers on my on my channel or whatever you call it. I guess it's my channel on YouTube where this information is available and I'm reading it I'm trying to do it without comment and I've done I'm pretty successful I think but again I give me your comments let me know I need feedback anyway I will continue to read that I'm going to educate people as to exactly what what the history of this has been uh, such as Human Rights Development Canada and the government of Canada are partners in rolling out human rights in Canada and making sure that the UN protocol on disability rights is implemented. As a result of that, they struck a committee, which then uh, became the Office of Disability Integration, ODI. You can search these terms on the internet, and uh, they've got many, many papers there, and we're tracing the, we're tracing the history of uh, the uh, advent of uh, more open human rights and more described human rights in Canada. Again, these are domestic, covered under domestic law, Canadian Human Rights Act, Ontario Human Rights Act, and etc. But we also have international agreements and treaties, which we signed on to, which is UN protocol and optional protocol of disability. The only thing that optional protocol of the, of the uh, protocol states is that if, if a member state, such as Canada, is doing like they're doing here, where there is no other means of, of getting a voice and, and have, being heard, such as been proven in this case, then I'm able to bring it directly to the UN, directly regarding the UN protocol on disability rights. 
The problem is, UN, as with everywhere else, you must write it down. So, UN, you might want to take a look at your own protocol. And it's really funny that people that can't write it down for themselves for whatever reason. I mean, if I had a different language and I had to have it interpreted into English, I get an interpreter. <coughs> That's accessibility. But me as a person who can't write it down for any reason whatsoever, yeah, I could physically write. I could even type, you know, if I take my time doing it. This stuff was all downloaded off the net. Okay. Um, everything takes me longer and, and I pay for it with with the physicality and yet you know i a person with a second language is able to have any kind of interpreter at any cost but a person such as me who the only way i get rights is to have it written down in this climate in this system and again this is your system not mine you're the ones who made sure that every lawyer in ontario has done business with uh, the government of Ontario, which automatically makes this a conflict of interest. You have made it impossible for me to hire a lawyer. And that's your fault and your responsibility, not mine. The duty to accommodate is yours, not mine. I've been more accommodating than anybody at all. Anyway, it's time to prove that this citizenship means something that it is worth something more than lip service planted on my buttocks. And a lot of talk about, but, 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 but. Keep passing the buck about whose responsibility is. Again, I challenge you that I am of the mind, and I believe other people are of the mind, that it is all of our responsibility. So stop making excuses. It's time for real leadership, Justin, or Kathleen Wynne. It's time for you to step up and say something before you get dragged off to International Criminal Court. And by the time I'm done with this situation, I'm not going anywhere and I'm not doing anything. And I'll make this the biggest international incident you ever saw. Matter of fact, no, I'm not making it that biggest incident. You are. You are leaving me no choice. I have already uh, asked legal aid to uh, give me a lawyer to advise me with regard to Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. I am going to, I've already got the application filled out. Application to renounce Canadian citizenship under subsection 9, uh, parentheses 1. And I'm, see, I will be, if you're forcing me to do this and show that Canadian citizenship is not worth anything, then I have already filled out section 5 to say that I am, I will be seeking political asylum to escape continued persecution, crimes against humanity, genocide, and medical, medical experimentation in Canada. And I will be signing this document and I will be leaving Canada. It's my intention that if it's not done by Canada Day, maybe that'd be a good day to do it, put it into the international arena. Then, then at least I'll finally maybe get some real representation. Anyway, your choice. Do the right thing. This is Chris Bacon, the brain injured guy, hoping that you'll join me in reinventing the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board restoring it to the actual thing it was supposed to be if it's going to be part of the system at all to free up doctors from their uh coercion and influence and uh harassment of all persons we need to free up our medical system from this uh system of tyranny patient-centered care again and if they can get away with this, what they did to me for this long, then there's only one thing responsible, and that's the government on both levels. Provincial government and federal government. We are not cattle. We are not a commodity. We are not to be traded and sold. And you can't arbitrarily remove my rights. And yet you've done so through the system on all fronts. That is intolerable. That is abuse. That is illegal. I look forward to answering these questions. It's This is still time to work together. And I'm hoping you will take this opportunity to work together to solve this problem for all of us because this is not good for anybody. And isn't that what Canada is supposed to be about? Stepping up? 
using opportunity to make things better for people? Isn't that what you promised Mr. Trudeau and every other politician that's ever sat in that prime, prima facie chair of privilege? And Queen Elizabeth, as respectfully as I can, you need to either clarify. Now, again, it's not totally your fault because we're talking about going from a monarchy system where your rule was absolute to a, a modern day democracy. If you are what you say you are, then you need to take initiative and show the world how you can lead the world. And maybe if you did this, it might restore a little faith in me to have in you. And maybe your Westminster style of democracy, because if this is not you, and if you agree that this is not the way your privilege is to be abused, then either remove the privilege completely, or you make it clear that it is to be a standard to be held higher. They're held to a higher standard of the law. Not make it up as they go along law. That's the only way true democracy can reign in here. And you, I, you know, I've had experience of all the people that claim to represent you. I have history of your family and your dynasty and that to refer to. And frankly, it's, it's atrocious. I don't agree with it, but you know what? I don't have to. I'm hoping that if you're all you say you are, and you are modern, and you are uh, you know, compassionate and all that other stuff, then you must see how the abuse of privilege has been interfering with democracy and even just the smooth running of governance, how it's not protecting your subjects if that's how you continue to look at us. Or the people over which you oversee the government of. So, what, you could do a royal decree, couldn't you? Maybe work on that. Uh, can we work on that? Can we work on a better way to establish that, that privilege is exactly that? It's a privilege. It's something that you're supposed to uphold, not use against the people. To hold you exalted above the law. Anointed by God, prove it. Which God do you are you anointed by? You could solve a lot of problems in this situation even by giving a speech. Vocalize what is, you know, if, if, if let us know what your feelings are on it. You know, we need leadership. Maybe it's time for the queen to stand up and lead better than what we're getting and this won't do because the only place this is ending up if I have anything to say about it is International Criminal Court this is the last chance for you to do the right thing all of you after that I'm done and, and when I get to this court case it's June 28th at 10 o'clock in the morning courtroom number 105 at 85 Frederick Street at the corner of Duke Street in beautiful downtown Kitchener. You want to come early. I'm not sure about parking. Uh, there's a lot of construction around, so there's there's also parking around, too. They, I, I'm not sure if they have their own garage in there. It might be just for the people that are involved there. I, I'm not sure if you can get in the building. I don't think so, but uh, there's parking around the area. Come on in. Check out those front doors, disabled doors. Uh, need all the support we can get because guess what? I'm not just fighting this for me. I'm fighting this for everybody. We can actually put an end to the Workplace Slavery and Interference Board once and for all. Do it right. Anyway, gee, it almost looks like the sun shining. Sun will shine on a bright new day. Anyway, hoping this is finding you well. And gee, it's probably one of the shorter ones. Anyway, uh, hopefully the information is good. And please stay safe.